Kim, thanks so much for joining me. I'm super pumped to chat. Thank you for having me. I'm excited too. <laughs> okay, let's get to it. We were just chatting offline and I feel like we could literally talk for hours just about like random stuff, but I'm, I'm really excited to hear your story because um, you have sent me just this awesome story about how you've kind of been able to fine tune some market authority strategies to your business and some of the different initiatives that you have going on. And I immediately was like, we got to talk to Kim on the show. We got to bring her on. So I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I can't wait to hear how things are going for you. And for those who might not know you yet, would you mind just sharing a little bit about your story and kind of where you are today? Yes, absolutely. So my story is very, I feel like unique in a sense, because I am in my mid thirties and I feel like I've done a ton of things already. So um, to kind of go backtrack um, in college, I actually went for an interior design degree and finished that. I worked in interior design for many years, moved from Hawaii where I lived to Pennsylvania, was doing interior design there. And the funny thing is I was in a small town in Pennsylvania and nobody wanted to remodel their houses. So I was in this like panic mode because my job at the time here, I am like 24 years old and my job was a little salary and more commission. And I was stressed. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to survive. This isn't for me. And one day they called me into the office and they're like, Hey, we're going to lower your salary more. And we're going to give you a bigger commission. And here I am like, I can't do that. That's not going to happen because all I have ever known is stability. Like my parents, everything was preached of like stability. You want to make a salary and have all the benefits and everything. So that day I went home and I'm like, what's the most stable job I could ever do in my life? And I went back to school to be a teacher. So <laughs> I ended up being a teacher. I moved to Florida um, once I finished teaching uh, my college degree for teaching. And I started teaching elementary school and I loved it for a while. And love I all the props to every teacher out there after doing it for six years. I just, I couldn't do it anymore because I wasn't valued where I wanted to be. I was micromanaged too much. The essence of teaching I loved, but I didn't get to do that. I had to follow the script and the robotics of everybody else. So I kept talking to my husband. It got rough for COVID. It got really rough. I ended up teaching three grade levels at one time mm -hmm. and would never like an ask, will you do this more of a, like you're doing it. And I was just exhausted and I just couldn't, I didn't have the joy in it anymore. So I talked to my husband and we're in the car one day. And I just remember saying like, okay, we just bought our house and the salespeople, we did new construction. The salespeople were like, you should be selling houses because you're describing the molding and the light fixtures. Like, you know, all the things. And I'm like, Okay, cool. But I didn't really think about it much more. And a year later, COVID happened. I decided I need to make a change. I'm in the car with my husband. And I said, I think maybe I want to do real estate. And he turned to me and he's like, you need to do that immediately. <laughs> like, I love that super supportive about it because he knew I had background knowledge of homes from my design degree and working in the design field. And I said, okay, I'm going to do it. So here I was teaching full time, did my real estate license, started doing real estate part time, and it was going fine, but it was also a lot of work because I'd be teaching and I'd get the phone calls from a client and I'm like, I'm in a meeting, like, you know, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say I was a teacher at the time. So I was like trying to own that I was in meetings or something like that. And I ended up finally deciding it was time. So at the end of that school year, I gave my notice, I was done and I decided I'm doing real estate full time. So I started that in May of 2021. So full time. So it hasn't been super long for me, but yet there has been a huge change the moment I went from full time to full time. And even in this past year after working with you and the other side of the story became very interesting that I'd never planned, but friends of mine had known that I did interior design. So here I am 
working as a realtor and they asked me to design the upstairs of their house and their house is gorgeous, like 5,000 square foot, you know? So like upstairs, I was like, okay. And here I am like, I'm going to just do it. But I don't know how to run my own business like that either. So I just did it off the cuff. And as soon as I did that job, I had requests after requests for interior design work and real estate. And I was like, you know what? They're like the perfect marriage because they even talked about how they want to have it all done and beautiful for when they go to sell their house in a few years. And I'm like, okay. So like it became like the perfect marriage. And in January of this past year, I actually opened the design side of my business and it has gone nuts. And I thank you and all that because I learned so many valuable tools on how to run just the real estate business that transferred over to the design business. And it kind of just became so simple to me in a sense, like I'm learning every day, of course, but like so simple, the transition into a designer and a realtor at the same time. Oh my gosh. There are like, that is so cool, Kim. Like (laughs) the story of realizing, you know, time and time again, like, oh, my path is taking me to a new place. Something else is calling me. What is it? And just like answering that call, taking the leap, getting into real estate and then bringing in interior design, which is something that you had passion for. You like doing it. It's, it's a perfect compliment, which I want to talk about like all the different opportunities. I think that there are, I mean, that's a crazy journey for you. How, (laughs) how have you managed all of it this year? Like, has it been like super nuts or is it just very exciting and you're kind of taking it? So it's been super nuts. I will say that Um, (laughs) my real estate business ended up doubling this year. So my first year, like while you're building another business, which is is pretty pretty crazy. Yeah. So like, I think my first year in real estate, I was very fortunate. I did six deals my first year Mm -hmm. and I, you know, I'm not from the area. So my sphere was literally my husband and who he knew. And then my teacher community that I was kind of like leaving behind, you know? And so I was super surprised that I even did six and it, but you know, the market was insane. So like in Florida, especially it was very insane. Everybody was coming to us, you know? So I ended up doing well then, but then this year I'm on track for the end of the year for 12 deals, which I'm pumped about because I am growing a whole nother business on the side and my design business as of today, we currently have eight jobs in process. Eight. Oh my God. And they range from a short-term rental that we're just decorating to a full-on gut job, moving walls and choosing every single piece of furniture and every finish in the entire house. So like we have such a, a big amount and I say we, because to manage, I needed to hire somebody. And, um, I ended up working with a friend of mine who had been following me on Instagram and seeing everything I was doing. And the teacher community was talking about what I was doing. And she actually used to teach with me and she approached me with the same kind of unfortunate scenario where this teaching was just not going the way she wanted. She wanted something more. So I ended up kind of, I'm, you know, training her. So she's more like a junior designer, like, you know, very beginning kind of thing. And recently I had to add on more because between the real estate and design, I needed help there. So I ended up hiring a virtual assistant, but Oddly, the virtual assistant ended up being a person in my neighborhood because I needed someone that could help me figure out the systems that will apply to my interior design business and the systems that are applying to transaction coordinating kind of thing. So she actually has been taking transaction coordinator classes, learning that whole world. And she's also in charge of ordering all the products for these projects, updating the clients, you know, scheduling our discovery calls, things like that, if I don't get to do it on my own. So I had to kind of get that support system, which I never planned to do because I just thought I'd be doing everything on my own. But at some point I had to realize I can't, I can't do it on my own. 
So, so I want to, I want to actually talk about that for a minute, because a lot of times, especially when I'm taught, like, say I'm talking to a newer agent or um, an agent who really hasn't been able to get past a certain level of production, they have a lot of fear to grow their team. They don't give themselves that permission to like either invest in the coaching or grow the team or, you know what I mean? Like make Mm -hmm. sure that they are operating at the level they need to, to allow production to expand. How did you are you just naturally a little, um, more predisposed, predisposed? Oh my God. What is the word? Predisposed. Yeah. Predisposed. (laughs) I know. Are you learning together? Thank you. I know the pregnancy brain is real today. (laughs) Are are you just more naturally predisposed to being able to take, um, make those big decisions or did you have to like ramp up to it a little bit? When it comes to relinquishing control, no, I, and especially with a businesses like the real estate and design being so new to me, mm-hmm. I didn't really know what I was really like going to ask somebody to do. Like, it's so hard right. to figure that out, but time and time again, it was proving to myself when I was working till 10 o'clock at night or working every single, like I remember a few weeks at the beginning of the year where it's seven days of, of the week, I was either working on design projects, showing houses, you know, whatever, whatever. And it got to the point where I was getting that reminiscent feeling of how I felt when I was teaching of being too like consumed by it and yeah. never being able to shut it off. And I didn't want that to happen because I was in such a place where I loved what I was doing when I combined the two and I didn't want to make that sour. So I got to the point where I wasn't, you know, posting as much on the the social. So then I'm like, okay, well now I'm slacking in that world. And my design clients, like, um, I didn't know if product was even arriving at the warehouse because I couldn't keep track of everything. Um, I had points where I knew I couldn't show certain homes that were only like 30 minutes away from my house because scheduling was too tough that I started to think about maybe I need to refer them and they're only 30 minutes from my house. Like it started to get to that point where I'm like, this isn't, I can't manage it like this at this point. And I think that was a big wake up call. It was scary to do because I always have that, like, I need to make sure I they're okay. And they have enough work all the time. And like, that was tough. And there's sometimes, and I was very upfront with the people I hired. And I said, sometimes you probably aren't going to get any work because I'm going to be on top of things and I'm going to be okay, but let's figure out the things that you can do. And I don't need to direct you on because that's, what's going to help me the most. If I have to still direct them and delegate, it becomes like, I'm still not letting go because I'm still having to do all that. So once I was able to say, okay, you're going to make these curated vision boards for the um, interior design Instagram and blah, blah, blah. Like once I started to pass those things off, it got a lot easier, but yeah, it was scary to do. I mean, to hire anybody, it was very scary. Yeah. But it sounds like, it sounds like the big thing was you had the clarity to say, I am out of alignment with my goal here. I'm out of alignment with the ideal lifestyle and business that I left that security that was really important to you in order to achieve and in order to like maintain traction towards that goal, you had to have the support and you bet on yourself and you made it happen, which I love. And and there was something like a more personal point of it that really made it more clear. So me and my husband deal with infertility and we were three times into IVF and that required so much of me not being available that I needed to make sure like I had support behind me where if I am like we had to travel up north to New York for it so if I'm in New York and a client needs to go see a house because the market's still hot then I need somebody that can go show it to them and whatnot and like those things like you said they had to align for me to see like I'm not aligned and I need to be more aligned with my personal life and my you know work life so it was definitely like a wake up call in a sense, because I wouldn't have been successful at this point this year if I let that all go before. Yeah, absolutely. And I think some people, the choice is either, well, I need to play smaller. You said, you know what? No, there's potential here. I want to grow. I want to move forward. I want to keep, keep expanding and big, big kudos to you for that. So, so as you 
are now almost a year into this managing both of these thriving businesses. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest like systems or strategies that you've been implementing that have helped get you um, on, on the right track? So system number one, and this is something I struggled really hard with because, you know, you're told all the time that you need to wake up at 6am and you need to work out first and then you need to do this. And like, I, nothing more in life. Do I love more than sleeping? Like hundred percent. I am a sleeper and I could sleep till probably 10am still to this day. And I started to really try to buy into that. And what happened with me was it wasn't making me happy. It wasn't fulfilling me. And in fact, it would make other things get delayed because I would struggle then to get back on track. So I had to adopt my own system of like my schedule. Like I need to be okay with the fact that I'm not going to wake up at 6 a.m. And I'm going to instead wake up at eight and then I'm going to work out and do my thing. But I need to make sure that my clients know that I'm available from 10 to four and special ones are after that. But setting the schedule was the biggest hurdle for me because with real estate, we want to just be on all the time and available all the time. And there's times that I am like hundred percent. There are times where it's a special scenario and, and I'm available, but for my sanity and my business, I had to make sure my schedule was on because then my design business needed its own section of my brain and time. So I needed to be able to delegate my myself to do those things. So I had to not only schedule the block of time each day, but what each day looked like. So like Monday was a team meeting with my people and we just talked about projects and whatnot or um, closings that are coming up. So like those that happened. And then Tuesday was hundred percent on my calendar. It still says it today. Tuesday and Thursday is work day. Like you have to just sit at your computer and work because what I was finding was I was throughout the week going to the new consultations and then doing showings and then going to pick out product. And like, I was not getting anything done and I was just driving constantly. And I, I never felt like I could achieve anything. So I had to be, those are the days you're sitting at home, you're in front of your computer and you're doing all the things you need to. And then Wednesday was that more like flex day. Like you can, you know, change what you need to. And then Friday's the goal of like, you don't have anything to do. You can do personal stuff and have fun. Or if you need to fill it in, it's okay, but it's not like you need to be doing something. And I do a lot of like review stuff on Fridays, like, okay, what, what do I need to work on for next week? What are things that I need to prep, you know, whatnot. But the scheduling was my biggest system because I failed at that for most of the year. So that was my biggest, like as of the summer, I had to make that happen. Um, And then regarding like management wise, how do I manage my clients between real estate and design? Because there's, there's quite a bit of people I have to make sure I stay in contact with. So a CRM. So, you know, I had started with just a real estate focused CRM, you know, and that was fine, but I now needed something that could kind of cross because sometimes my design clients end up being real estate clients and then it goes back and forth or sometimes they're solely just that. And so I ended up in a CRM that, you know, still does workflows and still does um, scheduling discovery calls. Like it does all those things for me, but it's not just real estate focused. Did you need something that like allowed you to send out invoices and things yep. like that too? Yeah, okay, so cool. invoices, so it has all that. Yeah. It's called Dubsado and it's just very yeah. um, useful in those places because I needed to have the options and that gave me the options. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, was there a little bit of trial and error with this stuff or did you just like nail it right at first? So I'm a super techie and I'm like nerdy in that sense. Um, <laughs> I, that. yeah, so I love computers. I design my own websites and stuff like that. So I'm, you know, very blessed to have that skill. However, yes, trial and error. And I think, you know, the more that I was in market authority and kind of like learned that I needed the systems and the how to manage my life and even how to figure out 
and really self-reflect, okay, this job or this closing, what did I do wrong? What did, what needs to be better? What was great? Like those things helped me figure out what am I in need of to make sure that it improves or continues those great parts. So I had done a lot of research because my mom also runs a business here and I was trying to help them organize their business. So I was kind of researching for both of us and kind of stumbled upon that um, that one platform, but there's a, bu- a bunch out there. Right. And same with like yeah. CRMs for just real estate is that, you know, none are ever going to be the one it's never going to be like Cinderella slipper, right? It's not going to be perfect, but <laughs> the one that checks the most boxes and big thing for me is the interface, like the user interface, like if it's clunky and doesn't feel good, then I don't want to use it. So I go for something that's a little more seamless and cross platform, like from my computer to my iPad, to my phone, like stuff like that. Yeah, that totally makes sense. UX, very, very important. (laughs) Where, where you mentioned market authority. So can you point to some of, um, maybe some of the more specific, like mindset shifts there or specific strategies that you learned that you're able to adapt to both? Yeah. So, um, biggest thing I think I was reaching out to market authority about was social media. So when I first stumbled upon you, of course it's on YouTube. And like, once you stumble on somebody on YouTube who does something that you're interested in, you need, and you stumble on them on that platform, then you're like, well, if they, if I stumbled on them, then they're doing something right. And they can educate me on how to do that. Right. So um, I was coming to Market Authority for more social media because I really wanted to figure out how to leverage my social media to get more clients. And this is, again, when I was mainly just a realtor, right? So Mm -hmm. I was coming to just in the real estate mindset. And the biggest thing that I learned from you and Market Authority was about your brand. I like never heard the word brand before. (laughs) Like I had heard it, but like not in the terms of like myself needing to have a brand. Right. And that was like something I was like, oh, you're right. Cause like everybody I like to follow has a brand or like something about them that I'm attracted to. And so that was a big part of it. Like learning that I needed to do my branding and figure out who is my ideal client. Again, words I never heard of. And I'm like, I I originally worked for a big brokerage and then I went to a boutique brokerage and nobody's talked about ideal client. And I'm like, okay, like this makes so much sense. So um, that was a big part of it too, the ideal client and how to kind of market yourself and your brand to them, but also to still be authentic and real because I always admired that about you is that if I go on your socials, I don't just see, oh, real estate and coaching, blah, blah. It's like, oh, here's my son. Here's my family. Here's like what we're doing. Like it's stuff that's so authentic and like relatable. And that's what I wanted to kind of accomplish. So tell me a little bit about your ideal client right now. And, and I'm about to like geek out right now. So I'm trying to like hold myself back a little bit. Um, tell me about your ideal client. And then I want to tell you what I find so impressive about what you did for them. Okay. So my <laughs> ideal client, I feel like has changed. So, yeah, I, and, and I feel like that's okay. Right. So I originally was going into real estate and I'm going to talk about real estate mainly right here, but my real estate ideal client, when I first started was teachers, I literally was doing all the things to make teachers like the star of course, you know, but like, I will discount my commission for you and stuff like that. And I was going to do that because they deserve whatever I can give them. Right. And my brokerage was very on like, yes, you can, you should do something like that. If you don't want to do like a hometown heroes program, here are other options you can provide to them on your own. And I'm like, okay, cool. So that was my original ideal client. The trouble was in that market, they were unfortunately not working out because they had unfortunately lower income. They did, were not cash offers. They weren't any of that. They could not be competitive in the market. And that was a struggle. And it wasn't that I didn't want to help them because I still do. I will I 100% love teachers so much, but I had to start shifting and being like, okay, well, where's my client that is the majority of people that I can connect with? And one of the biggest things I really connections with is the fact that I was out of state 
and I came from other places and I came to Florida. And so I'm not the local girl that knows every in and out, you know, whatever. I am a person who also had to go through this transition and find a place to live and all that. And my husband is the lifelong person that has been here and he's my backup, like here, tell me about this area. Right. And so yeah. I really started to connect a lot with out-of-state clients to the point where my first year in real estate, five out of six of the transactions I did were out-of-state people. Wow. I know. It was very shocking. Did, and then same you, for this did year, you find that through the Did you find that through the brand builder? Through so some of those like prompts? Yeah. And so when, when I had to do like the whole, like, let's look at your old transactions. Yeah. And even when I had to send out the reviews from people uh -huh. and whatnot, it like it didn't click until I started to like, go through all that. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, there were five out of six of them. I'm like, that's weird. One was my mom, like, and she was out of state too from Hawaii. I had to do video chats to find her uh -huh. house, you know, like how crazy. But like, I never sat and thought about it, which is why that was such a valuable tool because that really helped me see like, how can I promote myself for those people. And, you know, I've even gotten referrals from the market authority, other members, and they were out of state. So like the yeah. one I just had a closing with was from Washington state. And we've done three deals already, like for that same people, they're the same people, you know, but like, what's so nice is, is that I, I use that, like, I know what I'm doing when it comes to technology to help those out of state people. I know how to make them feel comfortable, you know, and I, I think that's what I really leaned into for this. Oh my gosh. So, so let me tell you what I think is so cool about this. You identify your ideal client, their relocation. There may be someone who it, it's an ideal client that maybe for someone who is that like native transplant or like who has been there for a really long time, it's a little out of sight, out of mind because mm -hmm. they're really focused on their community and sphere, which is awesome. And so you kind of looked outside the box and when these people are coming in, they need help setting up. And especially mm -hmm. if it's the second home or if it's going to be a rental, they don't have the time or the bandwidth to come and camp out for six months to furnish and design their property, yep. which makes that, that other offer so appealing to them. Like, did that happen by accident? Like yeah, it, it kind of seemed I like it happened I, a little bit I, more I, chance, but you probably yeah. did that by intention. Well, and I, you know, I don't feel like I ever planned it. However, I think what I... I think I promote myself in the sense that like, I'm a person, I'm a human. I'm not just trying to get you in a house and move on. I'm trying to yeah. get you into a home. Right. So like my biggest brand and here's my brand. Okay. So I, I'm like excited about this. So my brand is curating beautiful living. Like that's what I want. Right. So whether you're just buying a house, <laughs> oh, I want it to be your beautiful living there. If you're, you know, furnishing it. So like one of the jobs design wise that I have right now is interesting in the sense that they weren't my real estate client. That's fine. But they were referred to me by a realtor and it's for a short-term rental. The people live out of state and they need this whole thing decorated for, you know, VRBO or whatever, whatever. And they don't even live here. So like we're doing video chats to do the walkthrough for their house to design it and everything. And like, those are people that while it's a design related thing, I have been so good at with my real estate trying to communicate via video chat and email and stuff like that that it helps me lean into that project as well so like I definitely think that my that ideal client is carrying through and I can't I'm actually thinking right now I think every single design client I have is not originally from this area so like the relatability I have to them and understanding it has been really beneficial too, because even three days ago, I had clients come in from Massachusetts, they bought a house and we are fully gutting this house. And we went shopping together for furniture and picking paint colors and stuff. But like the, I think they are the perfect client for me because there is, they're able to come into it with the understanding that they can't do it all. I'm here to do it for them. And I will forever make, I think, a great impression because when they're sitting in their house and looking at the plant in the corner, mm -hmm. 
I'm the person they're going to think about because I help them do all that. Right. So I think it really just tied together organically, which is what I'm all about. I want things to be organic. I don't need to always plan every step of everything, you know? Yeah. And, and you know what my favorite part about this, and I don't know if you've been thinking about this too, is like, as the market continues to shift, as those like second homes become more challenging for people to justify and invest in all this different stuff they're going to have a choice and the choice is going to be, well, we can either continue to reinvest the equity or the the other money that we do have into real estate, or we can put that money back into our existing properties to then maybe come up with some different options. Like maybe take that home and turn it into a rental to get more money, that kind of stuff. And, and that's an additional service that now you can diversify your income with during the market shift, which is, which is like incredible. So speaking of the market shift, so Uh that is something that has kind of been a big focus of mine in the past, I would say five months or so, because we know that the market is definitely different than it was. And I had started to think about, okay, so how can I serve my real estate clients better with the skill set in the business I have as a designer. And so I did come up with the fact that, hey, I'm going to offer staging as part of my Mm skill set, right? And things that I offer. So I had gotten a listing right when the, I mean, I'm telling you within the week, the market started to shift, right? I had got a listing literally from my neighbor right next door to my house. And um, first person ever in my neighborhood to use me as a realtor, just so you know, like that's what's so crazy (laughs) about it is that everybody knows I am one, right? So I go in and I see their house and they were unfortunately personal reasons getting rid of the house. And I walked in and I'm like, for the price point you want with the market that has shifted, we need to really make this stand out. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to offer staging as part of my offering for doing just the sale of their house. Like I'm not going to charge them money. I'm just going to do it. And that's going to help me in my portfolio for this. So I literally went and bought a ton of inventory stage the house with their existing furniture. So we call it an occupied stage. So accessories, rugs, things like that. And that house sold like two days on the market for cash price, full, full price offer. Right. So that was like a whole, and that's a case study that you get to use and you get to market it. Because there's other houses at that time that were listed in my neighborhood that have been sitting for three weeks, four weeks or whatever. And so I felt, okay, so this is something beneficial. So I decided, okay, I'm going to keep buying inventory as I see it. And I'm going to have it ready to go. And once you know, our girl Vivian called me the one day and she said, Hey, I need a stage. She called me, I think on a Sunday or Monday. And she's like, I need it staged for Thursday. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready, but I'm going to be ready and I'm going to make it happen. And we, you know, her, the house she was listing was quirky and had a very interesting layout, very tiny. We staged it and it like transformed the whole thing. Like the sellers and everything were just impressed with how different it looked. Right. So I'm like, okay, so here's another reason why staging is so important. So how can I make that part of my way to can you know, get people to be like, Hey, I want to list with her. Right. So I talked to my broker and I said, I think I want to do a tiered commission structure. And I think I want to offer my clients three options. And I want to say, if you want the bare minimum, not I say bare minimum, but like, you know, I'll put a sign in your yard or put it on MLS and I'll, you know, show it if I need to, but it's going to be a lower commission than normal. If you want the regular full service, uh, interior, not, I go back to into side uh, a yeah. realtor and you want the full service open houses extra marketing blah 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 it's going to be the regular commission and in there I will if you're occupied house I can bring in accessories to stage a little bit like that's part of it and then if that. you're a fully vacant home the commission is going to be a little higher but that's going to cover me coming in to stage your entire house right and i have presented it to about three different people and they like couldn't believe that i would offer those options like they were so happy to see like oh my gosh like she's not just coming in to just do the same thing she's trying to help solve the problem of things are sitting forever you know and and I think that was a big, you know, eye opener for me that is like, okay, I need to work with the market and how can I use my skills to make the market work for me? Oh my God, Kim, I'm like I'm mind blown right now. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm like, so, this is so exciting because this is what I love about real estate there. It's never like just about the transaction or finding a house or like getting the lead. It is, it can be such a more rich, complex journey if you do what you've done and you have the approach of being bold, being creative and being curious and looking for ways to serve beyond just opening doors. And I talk about this all the time because we, we've we as an industry have tied our value and our worth to putting signs in the yard. Right. And, and I think that that is just such a mistake. And the consumers, like the public, has picked up on this, which is why people want to push back on commission or which is why people think that we're just not anything more than like a used car salesman. No, no, you know, things against yeah. used car salesmen because I know, no, but, yeah. but you know, the whole thing. And, and what you've done is you said, okay, who, like you've taken all of these strategies. You said, who is my, like, what is my brand? What are my values? What is my mission? And who is going to be best served by this? You identified that ideal client and then you cared enough to figure out what their new challenges are going to be with the changing market. And you brought in other skills that could actually serve them at a higher level. And you're going to be one of these agents who are going to coast through this market shift. Because in my opinion, the market shift is, is a good thing. We need that. We need a correction. We could not continue doing what happened the last couple of years. And you look, looked at it and you said, hold my coffee. Let's find out what we can do. Right? Like, And I say coffee because I'm drinking coffee, whatever yeah. you're into. But I didn't get mine today. So I do need to get on that. But yes, oh, so, I mean, I think that's the, the thing is that I, I am obsessed with owning my own business. Let's just say that. Like I am forever trying to learn. So like between the market authority and reading all the blogs and whatever I can find, yeah. I'm just trying to consume it and figure out how can I outlast these, you know, trends, because right now, you know, real estate, it's a little slower, but I have my design, you know, job going on, but like, I know that I need to be something that's bigger than myself. So that was my whole thing about my brand is how can I make it bigger than just me? I don't need it to be all about me. I want it to be about something that can transform into whatever I needed to be. Right. So same with when I decided to name my design business, I looked at it like, well, what if someday I'm going to have my own brokerage? What kind of name will carry on to become a design brokerage, all that stuff. Like I didn't just want to be Kimberly Griffith designer. You know, I didn't want that. Right. Right, So I wanted to be a, a name that people could hear anywhere, whether I start bringing out pillows to sell or whatever, you know, I just wanted something that could be bigger than just me. So I think that's a big part of the business is that, you know, with real estate, a lot of times it is you, you are, that's, you are the face of it and that's it. But what is the niche that you can have that can kind of make it bigger than just you, you know, and that was something I just kind of wanted to focus on. What is my niche and my niche is beautiful living. Like that's what I do is make sure people have beautiful homes inside and out. So I love that. Do you have any advice for agents who might not have like the eye or the interior design background on how they can kind of do similar initiatives that you've done and just how can they think outside the box to also see more growth? Yeah. So I would say for, if you're wanting to kind of promote more homes to look a little better, presentable, anything like that. The simplest thing you can do is literally just walk through the home with your clients and help them figure out what could be moved. And I think a lot of people have this skill that they don't realize they do. But if you walk into a home and you're feeling something's off about it, then that means something's off about it. So then you just need to pan and look and see like, what can they move around for more functionality? What could they remove? in total, right? And having those connections of like, hey, I have a painter, I have a storage facility, I have these things, like here's a great way to kind of make it look beautiful, right? And that can just be something that you offer as, hey, this is like a consultation, like a staging consultation or something like that. And 
and it doesn't always have to be about making the house beautiful in general. Like what's your skill, right? And my skill was design. So that's what I brought out, but maybe your skill is video, like, you know, doing a video tour of the property and talking about it. Like there's so many things that every person has, they just need to find that and how it can adapt and change into their business. And I mean, I think that's the biggest thing is self-evaluating. What am I good at? And everybody has something. So don't say you don't have anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally totally agree. And I think so, so often we take for granted what re- really makes us special and unique. Yeah. Um, and, and not, not to be like all woo, but we're all, we're all just such unique snowflakes. We, right? we, like, are snowflakes. <laughs> we're all snowflakes. Yes. We, we all come from this, like this, like quilted vignette of, of different experience, different skills, and, and they all kind of come to, to lend itself, um, to create a really rich background. And if we just allow ourselves to, um, feel that worthiness, and bring it in and say like, you know what, this is something that I'm really good at. And, and I can be a force for good and a force for, for change for other people. If you just allow yourself to recognize it. Yeah. So I think that that's beautiful. And I think sometimes like your interests are a big part of it. So my husband's yeah. friends with somebody, I guess from high school or whatever, and he's a realtor up in Tampa and his brokerage hundred percent all they focus on it, or maybe it's his team. I don't know which one it is, but all they focus on is houses with amazing garages. Oh my gosh. And they're everything they ever list or sell has to do with a garage. And I think they're like called like motorhead or whatever, something like that. And so like that's just because the guy really likes cars. And so he wants to do, so he's listing houses that have, you know, beautiful garage bays or, you know, things like that. And I'm like, that's, he doesn't need to have like a skill set. He just has something he really loves and he, he can educate his clients on. So, you know, if somebody has like five cars and they're like, Hey, I need a place for all my cars. He's going to be the person to talk to because he has those connections and he knows what your needs are. If you have all those cars, like, I don't know, I don't have car. My husband does, but I'm like, I don't know anything about cars. So like, I would be the worst person to talk to. Right. So <laughs> I think that's like lean into those things, even if it's just a passion of yours, something you enjoy, like lean into that. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing for like, like there's another member of the program who, um, is like very close to the equestrian lifestyle. We've got people who love boating, who love mm-hmm. sports and, and you could even think of it from, from a really broad sense of the view of like how many people are working remote now and their third space is now in the home where they need a home that's going to accommodate like two work from home parents and a space for the kids and maybe something where everybody can be a- active. Right. But it's really just thinking about how society is shifting as it is so quickly right now and and finding that intersection where you can kind of provide a really unique perspective. I think that that's awesome. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's hard because, you know, I think we get in our own way. And I, that was me before I joined market authority. I got my own way the whole time. because I'm just like, (laughs) I'm just going to do it all, you know? And I think we, after going through the modules and started to see like where my strengths were and what I needed help with, that was a big like cue of like, okay, let's revamp and it's okay to revamp. And I still like two weeks ago, revamped my website again, because it's okay to do that. Like you have to, you know, I just, yeah. It's you can't never just stay perfect. stagnant. Yeah. If you done. stay still, you're not going to go very far. So I always, I'm not a big, I'm not scared of taking risks in my business. I'm scared of like elsewhere. Like I don't want to jump off a, a building or anything, but like uh-huh. I want to be able to, you know, make my business transform. And I think that's important. I love it. So, so just as we wrap up, do you have any advice um, for anyone thinking of joining market authority or just any words of encouragement? I mean, my best advice is to do it, (laughs) you know, like it's always, it's that monetary part that I think scares a lot of people, like the investing money into your business. Like that's hard to do because you don't usually make a lot of money at the beginning. And I can tell you even beyond, you know, real estate, the market authority has helped in all avenues of my life, my personal life, everything like that, because I'm able to improve my business that then improves my personal life and gives me the opportunity to do things that I never thought I'd ever get to do and have the schedule that I want to have. Like that's the key is that it's not just about your real estate business. It can help you in all aspects. So just do it. (laughs) Love it. Oh my gosh, Kim. I just, I want to acknowledge you and thank you for being so generous with your time with us today. Um, and, and I also really just want to, to acknowledge 
your like fresh thinking and approach to the way that you're building a business because you've done it in the way that you want to do it. Like you really looked at what was important to you and how you could not only create a business that impacts other people positively, but helps facilitate the life and the lifestyle that you want to create as well. Um, And like I mentioned earlier, you're doing it with a bold, courageous, and curious outlook. And I think that those are absolutely incredible qualities. And I'm really lucky to be aligned with someone like you. So thanks so much for sharing all that with us today. Thank you. I've enjoyed my time with you and thanks for everything you've taught me. So hundred (laughs) percent. Thank you. Oh my gosh, of course, my pleasure. So I'm going to have all of the details for, um, if you're listening to this and you guys absolutely go check out Kim, follow her on Instagram, see what she's up to. Um, and, and if it's cool, Kim, I'm sure if people want to just like continue following your journey or ask questions, you're good with that. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Let's chat. <laughs> I'll have, <laughs> I'll have all those details in the show notes, but Kim, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you.